Yeah, all right, well everybody, welcome back to the Stein Homestead. It is bright as it can be out here, and I don't have any filters for the GoPro, so you'll have to bear with me. But we're gonna come down here with my cup of coffee, and we're going to do a garden walkthrough tour and kind of check out the companion plantings that we did and see how they're doing. So let's give it a look here. And you know, I guess I'm taking more and more, uh -oh. <clears throat> step over the fence here. More and more, I'm calling it a victory garden because that's exactly what it is. The hope of a victory and the type of garden is specifically made for the type of economic times we're in. Uncertainty, inflation, costs, that's what it's for. So let's give a look here. First ones we did were the cabbages in the potatoes. And now as you can see, they're in pretty good shape and they're actually, these are the best looking cabbage plants that we've had in a while. And I think that's because of the fact that they're in shade. Because I've found, my experience is, is that cabbage is very sensitive to like the high heat swings we get here. So you can get it to all go to bolt and not grow very well if it gets too hot. And what we're looking at here is it is stuck in the shade and doing good. Here's some more examples here. I mean, it's just, I don't know if it's hidden from the, there's a few weeds here. Hidden from the heat tucked up in there we got some kale that is just growing phenomenal I don't know if it's actually competing making it compete to grow up and get bigger but this is the biggest it's been since we planted it so I want to say that it's almost because it's had to grow up and compete with the potatoes and it's growing in shape let's keep looking here yeah, these are all cabbages. And they're all, I mean, look at this one. All leaf, it's doing super good. There's a broccoli in there. Again, same type of deal. That's a pretty good looking little broccoli head for where I'm at. And it's doing good, I think, because it's sheltered. Oh, here's a really nice looking head. They're growing really good. They're not going straight to bolting. Broccoli, yeah. Another couple weeks, that'll be ready to go. Broccoli over here. I had some cauliflower that I wanted to show you because that was my most interesting ones yet because cauliflower is hard to grow, I think, because it always wants to turn yellow and get nasty. But if we dig in here and look, because it's been shaded, it's actually staying nice and white without having to try to tie it up or do any of that hocus pocus. Let's see if I can find another one here. Because the, the broccoli or the cauliflower here is planted inside of the fodder beets, which as you can see, they're just getting huge. They're almost to the point where they're gonna, you see? Yeah, that one's sprout bolting a little bit. More broccoli down here. Weeds, always good at growing those. Yeah, look at this broccoli head. Just perfect. Get some weeds out of here. Like, yeah, these are, look at the height of those fodder beets. Yeah, weeds don't want to look at those. I'm excited to see how those turn out because those are for the pigs. Let's see what else we got that I can show you here. The beets are just loving it. Here's some. Let's look at this. What is this? This is the most prettiest, whitest cauliflower. I have ever succeeded in growing 
and I think it's growing the way it is because it's tucked inside. I mean, look at those, they're just gorgeous white. And they're shaded all day long because of the fodder beet. That's definitely a success. That one, eh, it's starting to bolt a little bit. All right, let's keep looking here. Definitely needs a good weed, and some of the weeds are starting to get a little bigger than they should. Here's my eating beets, and they're just looking gorgeous. This is zucchini, it's doing good. Another zucchini here. Oh, we got a little fruit going on here, yellow squash. Hiding out in there, we'll see how good it does. This is the subpar side of the garden. Always picking weeds. All right, let's keep walking here. The carrots are supposed to have gotten some squash in there with them. They're not squash, but uh, garlic. And as you can see, the garlic did not like getting planted down here in the fall. It, uh, or the spring, it all pretty much died off right away. But the carrots are liking the spacing we planted them at and how they're doing. Getting too many of these weeds growing in here. Here's our onion patch. A little weedy, but it's doing pretty good. I think it's going to be a good harvest this year. It's liking it down here. It helped a lot with the amount of moisture we got. Like I said, this is the root crop side of the garden. Let's go check out the tomatoes. And... Corn. Oh, these flowers are pretty. Check these out. These are gorgeous. Listen to those bees. I'm actually really happy with how well this, I gotta get the grass out of it, but I'm really happy with how well it's done. So, next to the tomatoes, we planted green beans. The benefit there is supposed to be the green beans putting nit locking nitrogen in for the tomatoes. I'm not sure if it's a, something that will actually work. Oh, I got to show you this guy. This is These are the meanest weeds that I've ever seen. Look at these guys. I don't know if you can see the thorns on that. But they... You gotta dig them underground. Like, look at that. Those are the meanest little buggers that I could ever grow in this garden. That is just, oh, those are mean. The one thing I've never had is a perfectly weed-free garden, but, oh, the corn's starting to get there. We might hit. The popcorn being knee high by the 4th of July. I gotta bring down my stirrup hoe weeder and clean up the edges of these beds. Mud's doing pretty good. This is the popcorn. It's growing actually a lot better than last year. And planted in here is peas. That's not pea, that's weed. Where are they at? They're down in there. This guy here. This guy here. That's a a cream field pea so it's supposed to put nitrogen in the soil and use the corn for support to grow so we'll see how that works i got half my corn planted with it half of it planted without it and we'll be able to tell if there is any difference at all from one side to the other and this is all sweet corn over here which is starting to come along now here's big old field peas like I said, lots of weed, lots of weed. 
horse fire is getting busy down here. But that's what this weekend is going to be for, catching up. Got some squashes finally starting to do their thing down here. Got some Boston Morrows and Alonquian squashes. Once those get bigger, I'll be able to show you. And then we got natural selection at its finest over here. Just some pretty hefty looking sunflowers. Just grew from seed from last year, so yeah. That's pretty much the victory garden. It's coming along. I might have to bump up the water if anything starts not liking the heat, but corn, tomatoes, a bee garden, and then over here, let's go check that out. We got strawberries coming in, which everybody loves strawberries, and they tell you what, the ones you get are the sweetest, happiest, best eaten strawberries around. Oh yeah, kids are gonna love that. Let's see if I can find a good one here. I find the ones, oh, there it is. Oh, there's some good strawberries ready. Look at that sucker. Mmm. Uh, nothing better. Yeah, I raised beds this year a little bit more weedy than I like. But everything's starting to come in pretty good. Here's my squash project. We're trying we're gonna try to vertically grow our squash and cucumbers, and that is finally taken off. I don't know if anybody else notices it, but it seems like plants that I plant from seed do better than plants that I plant from transplants. And I think, at least it makes sense in my head, that that is because the plants that are transplanted have to get used to the water I'm watering them with before they can really start to grow. Whereas the ones that start from seed, they just start out growing with this water and don't have to, say, adapt to it. Next year we're gonna get an indoor grow tent and start all of our own seeds. So stay tuned, like and subscribe if you wanna see that process. It's actually from the weed industry for a indoor type grow tent, so we will uh, get that and use that to start all of our indoor seeds. All right, well that's the Midsummer Victory Garden Tour. Thanks for coming along.